Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here, and today we've got a classic, about the first for me, um, 2915 board. This is the 2011 GPU failure type board. Now, a lot of people are using the DOS Dude fix, which I think is really awesome because it's a you know, software fix. But um, a while ago, about a year ago, I was sent one of these uh, CMI Zapper Tireus, no, Tireus 15 inch adapter boards. So I'm going to give this a go, let's see what these are like. And the nice thing is these actually have the PWM brightness control in them, so they'll be good because when you go to Sierra or higher, the old mod doesn't uh, give you the brightness anymore. So we'll give this a whirl. Hopefully it'll be a quick easy fix and the customer will be happy about that. It feels a bit of a shame to have to sully this board up given how clean it is. Okay, so apparently our first step is to put this unit over here. The person who engineers these is actually, you know, they put a lot of effort into making these things straightforward that's really good. That's a very nice fit. So we're just going to have to tack down a bit of solder to each and every one of those. Let's wait for it to heat up. And that's all we need to do. Uh, maybe we can get away without using too much more flux. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like I really do want flux. Main reason I want flux in this case is because even though this is a very clean looking board, there is a certain degree of oxidization on those legs. I could see it when I was trying to put the solder down. I might just fillet these up a little bit. The main reason being is if there's vibrations and whatnot, I don't want it to be cracking the fairly thin layer of solder. I'm pretty convinced that's good. Clear away the excess flux. I see they're using a microchip pick controller. That's looking pretty good. That's a nice, smartly done design. Made for very easy installation. Okay, next step we'll do is to remove the resistor that um, disables the GPU for us. Or I should say that removing the resistor disables the GPU. And that's R8911. Okay, R8911 is around here. I'm pretty sure it's that one, that one there. Now I'll just put it to the side in case I need to put it back. And that way there, it's not actively creating any connection, but it's available if I need to. To do the PWM, it seems we have to remove R9704 which is on this quad pack here which is for the brightness control uh, that would be the end one here this one here and again we're going to do the same we're just going to shift it off to the side slightly like so okay so we've shifted it off to the side there's no connection there but the resistor is there if we need it back for whatever reason Okay, so we have to run a wire from this pad here, unfortunately, over to the top pad here. We're going to use some uh, 0.1mm enamel wire, like here. Since these are signal lines, it's not a problem. Give it a little bit of slack. Interestingly, if I look at the guide that they have given for this program, have a look there. This next one, it goes on to this pin here. Okay, so according to the board view, there's a test pad here just beneath U5010 and across from C5710. So there's the U5110, there's the cap, which means that pad there is most likely it. 
Um, I guess we probably want to confirm that. But I would... Yeah, it looks pretty like much like it's going to be it. It makes for a slightly easier process. Shame there wasn't one for the backlight PWM. Let's gonna pull this down slightly, like so. So we approach the pad at a slight angle. Beautiful. Pretty happy with that. Let's see if it works. Looks like a nice swift boot. Mm hmm. Looking good. Let's see if our brightness control. Yep, yeah, there we go. That's looking great. Look at all, here we go. If you let this run for several hours to make sure it actually does indeed work. Alright, so there we have it. We fixed up a classic A20-2915, which has got the faulty GPU on it. Um, thanks to the hard work by all these various people around the internet that have come up with different solutions. And uh, this CMI Zapper Tiresias system is uh, quite handy because it's simply a little board that slips over the existing chip. And then you just have the two wires to run. And those two wires to run are only optional if you want to have um, brightness adjustment on high Sierra or later. One thing we did notice there was we were able to actually make a shorter link by using the test pad that was right next to where the um, circuit board was. So I'm going to send that information off to the person who does this and they should be able to hopefully improve the, well, yeah, amend the instructions and say look here's an even quicker way of doing things. So that's um, the CMI Zapper TICS. I don't really know how to pronounce that but um, very easy thing to do. It is a little more expensive than some other solutions, but I think the convenience of being able to just drop it on there and the fact that it reprograms the chip if you happen to inadvertently overwrite your EFI, that's a really nice bonus, particularly if you're dealing with sending these modifications out to other people because you don't want to have your customers coming back to you saying, hey, all of a sudden it stops working. And at least this will stop that from happening. I'll put the information how you can get these down on the bottom and thank you very much to CMI Zapper for sending them over to me for me to test. I know it's been about a year and a half since you sent them, but uh, what do you know, there you go, eventually it worked out, so thank you very much. I'll see you next time. <laughs>